question of the day. You know those doctor shows or those daytime TV shows in which someone is on the hospital bed and you just hear beep, beep, beep. Everybody starts to cry. The doctor's in there and he's giving it the old final CPR push and he kind of like, and he goes, I'm calling it. And then everybody kind of turns away and does the, oh no, kind of thing. But all of a sudden you hear beep, beep. And there's a fresh breath of life in this character that's on the table. But today, that's exactly what we're talking about. With Game of Thrones, Mother of Dragons expansion, this is a fresh breath of life into a much thought dead game. After all, the game's second edition came out in what, 2011, 2013, 2015? I don't know, it's, it's old. So right now though, the question is, what expansion would you like to see come to a game, or what game would you like to see an expansion come to with a much needed breath of life? Now, I don't mean a third edition of a second edition, although that could count, but I'm thinking of an expansion you would love to see made to really spruce up a game you thought long since dead. Battle War second edition, come on, baby. But let's take a look right now what Mother of Dragons offers should you get this. Is it something you need to play with every single time you play the game, or is it something you maybe can pass on? Or is it modular? is it not? Let's take a look right now. So here's Mother Dragons, let's take a look at what comes in here. So you've got new colors, first of all, you've got blue and purple, purple is my preferred gameplay. But notice also in the purple bag you have dragon miniatures, because you get dragons if you play as the Targaryens. These are for the Aarons, no dragons here, not even a sky gate or whatever it's called, sky door. Uh, you do get some new tokens for everyone for sea orders, these are basically orders that you can do across the sea there, the narrow sea or whatever it's called. Uh, you have some new tokens that are involved that are upgrade or downgrade tokens. So basically, a something can become a new castle or it can downgrade and become uh, not become a castle anymore. So basically, you can manipulate the board in a sense where somebody had control of something and now it's not even a castle anymore, so they technically lose the points. Obviously, there's the Targaryen player things that you would get. Uh, the Aaron ones come with those as well. New player screens with some of this art that we love from uh, Fantasy Flight's Game of Thrones games. Look at those. Some mean looking Targaryens right there. Uh, it tells you the new starting areas and locations. They start on Essos over here, which is the new sideboard we'll get to in a moment. Aaron uh, starts in the veil, vale, you know, kind of obviously that's where they are. Uh, the area is their new, is the area, but it comes with a little piece you put on the original board to make this area a little bit better of a starting place for the characters. There's a new part you put over the bite on the old map. There are some new house cards as well. Now these house cards are interesting because obviously there's a lot of cards here in my hand because the Targaryens offer a couple more things. They offer, first of all, level four Westeros cards. These are things that will affect how the Targaryens play. You only use them if Targaryens are in play, but they're different. So things like this, it says Storm's In. Uh, it's a level four. Domestic disputes. The Targaryen player may discard one power token to choose up to four other houses. Place one loyalty token on the home area of those houses. So the way that they win is by getting these uh, these tokens out there. So it's tough to add new tokens to the board other than this, other than waiting through each turn and getting to the Westeros phase. Now, you have your normal house card. So you have the House of Aaron and House of uh, Targaryen normal house card deck, which is cool. You get these new characters that we haven't seen before. So it's cool just seeing some of those. Uh, so Bronzeon uh, Royce, yeah. A uh, lot of power there. And then you have your Targaryen, so all the people that have uh, helped or technically hindered them in a sense. Uh, Khal Drogo, there we go. Uh, so you have all those, but you also have these, and this is what I really wanted to show you. These are the new vassal cards. So basically every house will get these vassal cards that can be used out of these three cards, you'll get one of these three cards. And you are one of these, you get three of these cards. Sorry, this is Jack and Hagar. You get three of these cards to make up your vassal hand. And the way this works is you will use those if you have a vassal house under your control. Now the way that works is it's a new set of rules in which you take these vassal tokens, which would be ones that they come with from this game. The vassal tokens are a little bit different. They have, you know, attack with the level zero. They have support or raid one. They have uh, defense or muster, uh, defense one or muster, and then they also have a defense of three. Once you choose one of the cards, you get three to choose from. Uh, you'll pick one to be your vassal card 
for the vassal's battle. Now, a couple rules about vassals. They can't enter where your commander is. That would be your player. Your commander can't enter where they are. Uh, so it isn't like you can use them to just clear out a space and then come straight in and take the castle. But you do have to use them strategically in the sense of attacking other people, uh, clearing out an area, uh, potentially setting up a block between, you know, it's just, it's meant to be used as a strategic support. But they can't win, they can't vote, they can't be a dominance, like they can't have the Valerian Steel, but if the commander has the Valerian Steel, they can add plus one to the combat. So if Braun has a uh, Braun will become a four then at that point. So just know that the vassal system is cool because it allows you to just really spread the game out a little better and it, it allows those areas that are not in play typically to be in play in a lower count game. Uh, you also get the new extension here, which obviously just kind of makes sense. This is just an extension to show where everyone starts. Targaryens are always last here. Um, it's just how that works. You have the new sideboard I want to show you in just one moment before I do. The vassal system works like this. They set up in certain areas and they get certain amounts of units on the board already. This is pretty much what they will start with and what they will have pretty much the whole time, unless they get wiped off the board, basically. But you saw the Vassal Tokens. You can place up to two Vassal Tokens on your turn uh, of the four that you'll have. So, this is the sideboard here. Comes with Dragon Strength here. The way this works is you'll put a Dragon Token on every, I believe it's every other, yeah, every other um, space of the Dragon Strength. So every time you hit a even-numbered space, you'll gain... Uh, new dragon strength that means those dragon units will get more powerful as the game progresses there are just areas out here like normal and then up at the top this is the bank of bravos here or the iron bank you can take a loan from the iron bank of bravos which is what these smaller cards are if you take a loan basically you pay the cost listed at the top in power so if you want this card you'll pay what's listed on it right so if you want this card it's going to cost you one power token but you'll get two boats and a uh, 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 infantry unit. This one you get two siege towers and infantry. This one you get three cavalry units. Uh, when one is taken, the rest slide down, and this one goes back to the bottom of the deck over here. If you own a debt, you have to pay every round the interest. You'll always have to pay a power. If you cannot pay your interest, you'll have to kill one of your um, kill one of your units. If you uh, the person with the Valerian Steel chooses which unit to kill, by the way. If it's you, someone else will choose for you. Uh, you can upgrade a fort into a castle. You can downgrade this into nothing. That You can you know, in just kill two units. You can peek it to the level four um, uh, Westeros cards. This one allows you to kind of move up your uh, supply. So lots of really good benefits. There's 10 power right there. So even if you're in a pinch, it still might be worth it to pay seven power to get three net, you know? So just a lot of little tweaks to the game that really can add strategy in the moment. So uh, it's it's good if you use your action token for the Bravo C um, bank. These are C tokens specifically, so you actually have to be in the C between them to use it. So one of these spaces, because your other board will butt up right here. Targaryens win by collecting loyalty tokens. That would be what I mentioned earlier in the in the Westeros deck. So once they land on a space and there's no other units there, uh, they collect that token. Once they get seven tokens, they win the game. So again, you're not specifically going for castles, but you're trying to collect these loyalty tokens, which is a good idea, uh, obviously. So that's some other Dragons expansion. First thing we need to talk about, things we really like about it. Obviously, I like the fact that it is a new stuff in a game long since thought dead that I really love. I love Game of Thrones Second Edition. It's a fantastic game. It gives you a lot of the feel of Twilight Imperium, which is one of my favorite games of all time, same designer, uh, with the way you move troops and everything like that, but it's a lot faster of an experience. There's the backstabbing, there's the vying for power. I love voting for power. That's one of the things I love about the original game, is just the mechanics are done so well to really get the feel of Westeros in this game. Now, the question is though, what about modularity? Is it something, I don't know, is it something you can play pieces of this expansion? Well, no. Specifically in the uh, in the instructions of this, it says you cannot play this modularly. You have to either do all or none with the player count. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, if you're playing with three players, there is some new things, by the way, in this. There are some new things in this that really spruce up a lower count player game. Because if you remember, if you play with an odd number of players, there's always someone who has an advantage. If you play with an even number of players, even less than the full player count, it still doesn't feel full because people can't go all the way south in the base game. But now, 
they've included what's called a vassal system. Now, they've also included a sideboard of Essos, or Essos, however you say it, in which the Targaryens kind of are doing their thing. They're starting over there. People can now jump between the two land areas. Also, there's some sea actions. You saw that. But the thing is, the sideboard only works if you have the Targaryens in play, and you can only play the Targaryens if you have, I think, four or more players playing. So, it is all or none in a sense where if you're going to use a sideboard, you have to have the right player count. You can't just put it in willy-nilly or take it out and say, well, let's use the vassals and take this out. You have to kind of do all or none uh, in a sense, basically. Uh, so just know that up front. As far as art and things like that, there's nothing really to discuss because it's the same art quality as the original game. You know the Fantasy Flight Game of Thrones art is really, really good. Uh, the board itself is nice, the, the little sideboard. Let's talk about the mechanics it adds. First of all, Targaryens play different, right? They're trying to vie for support, much like their story throughout the uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. They also have dragons. They have three dragon units, which are really cool. The idea that you can have dragons, and they get stronger as the game gets longer. They don't progress in strength as you do stuff. It's just a matter of time. If you hold the game out and last that long, your dragons are going to become way more powerful per unit. Also, the Bank of Bravos. People can now borrow from the Bank of Bravos. You get a quick boost, but you will have to pay interest on that. It's a neat thing. Uh, I like the idea of adding... Uh, a little bit of help during your turn in the sense of, man, I could really use some power right now. I'll take that bank loan that gives me three power and just, or ten power, excuse me, and just go from there and have to pay it back eventually. Let's talk about the main new change that would be the vassal system. This is actually the bigger change, in my opinion, than the Mother of Dragons sideboard and all that sort of stuff, which all that's great, it's fantastic, it adds a ton to the game. But the vassal system is a really, uh, secretly, it's a balancing factor and a player, a low player count aid uh, when playing Game of Thrones, because personally, I only like to play Game of Thrones when I have six people. Play the full count. Now it goes up to eight, because you have the Aarons and the uh, the Targaryens, but if you play with less, there's this new vassal system where the people who weren't, who wouldn't have been on the board, they wouldn't have been active, are now active, and people can take control of those throughout the turns, and it's almost like a stock game in, in like saying you're play, playing a, a train game that has stocks where you don't play as a company, you play as a magnate who potentially gets to run multiple companies. That's how this vassal system works. If I'm the Starks, I don't just get to use the Aarons as my uh, vassal. It might be that on this turn, I've got the Starks and uh, the, the Tyrells of my vassal uh, group, or maybe the, uh, the, the, uh, the Aarons are my next turn of the vassal group. And the way this works is you get an ally, essentially, that you get to control. They have their own house cards, they have their own units, all this sort of stuff. Uh, and it's good because it means that you can do more stuff, you can stretch your forces out better, you can really expand a little easier. In a sense, it just balances the game out with a lower player count. Now, obviously, um, playing with eight, you don't have that option of having the vassals, of course. But it's just one of those things where it really adds a lot to the game and really spruces it up. So here's the, here's the question. Do you play with this every single time? I think you do because it does add a little complexity with having those vassals and things like that. But if you're playing with a lower player count, it's definitely worth having those vassals in every single time. If you're playing with a full player count of eight or six even, uh, it's definitely worth having too because then the sideboard can come in with the, the Targaryens and all that sort of stuff. But it's really worth playing with just because it balances the game, it adds new content, it breathes breath into a game that felt a little bit like it was going to be dead, even though the game was great as it was. It really adds to the systems already in play. So, final verdict on this is yes, if you like Game of Thrones 2nd Edition, you need to get Mother of Dragons just for what it adds. If you don't like Game of Thrones 2nd Edition, well then obviously skip this in the first place. But if you like the game, but you're like, do I really need this expansion? I think the answer is yes. I think you do need to go ahead and get this expansion for what it does offer in the game. So that's it. That's kind of everything in a nutshell. What it comes with, when you should play it, if you shouldn't play with it. You really should. It's a good game. It's a fantastic expansion. So that's Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. I'm Brian Drake, I should say. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, follow me at the latest retro. And until then, I'll see you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower 